the Route 7, 7 crews like up there. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of the, uh, the group we've got here. Very good. How, how, how long have you been there? Escape the cold now. Oh, well, I live in Phoenix. I've been there about two years. Oh, okay. So, nice idea to have heard of. So, cool. What are you What are you doing down here now? Oh, okay. Just having to catch the weekend in? Well, no, I picked the weekend for this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a huge event. Oh, right. I can't believe it. Yeah. It's nice. So, so you're still Ours in the area. Yeah, you got some stuff. You got the little petri dish. Yeah, so there's a lot of other developers around here. But it looks like it's a little bit. It's not a bad place to start. Yeah, it's not a bad place to start. I know you guys are using it. And actually, we, we have a pretty good uh, group of my clients represented here today. <laughs> well How much did you um, pay them to go? Are you using that too? You can't get a better rate than $25 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ask that you guys don't discuss the rates you each have. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank so are you using that new at all? Yes, I have a client that I'll probably be using it for so right. trying to pick up more information. So, so then there's only a handful of people here that are actually using it in production. Then. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do kind of a, I mean, if you guys understand skinning, the, those of you, I mean, you understand the, the concept of, of what it is, have you ever worked with the CMS before? Yes, I guess. I'm not a developer. No, it, it, it wasn't that crop, was it? No, no, no. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> we don't like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my opinion about it, have you worked for it now? Okay, then I'll work for it. Put your pants in. Don't roll that If you work with Enfront, put SQL Profiler on it. And, and, see, and, see, and see what happens just when you load a page. Oh. And then you can count it. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay like for, 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 a, for a smaller. <coughs> just use a cheap free. But well, it's it's just it's not right for for enterprise. It is when you when you really put some traffic on it, you need some serious infrastructure because their code is so poorly implemented. Yeah. Yeah, you will. You will. You will. Cool. Well, I guess I kind of get an idea of what everybody's doing. So um, this is actually going to be the same session, a little bit of a tweak, but mostly the same session that uh, Open Force uh, in in Vegas this year. So I'll get started. I'm Ryan Morgan. I am a consultant, uh, managing partner at Aero Consulting Design. Um, we do software development for Dynanuke and also for Windows, for web, um, and, and, and we're, we're dabbling a bit in service-oriented architecture right now, too. So um, we've got a couple senior developers on our staff, uh, really um, top-notch software developers. And uh, you know, we, get to, we get to do some cool projects. And, and uh, like I said earlier, we got a pretty good representation of, of my clients in here. We do consulting. So if you need consulting, come by and grab a card on the way out. That's it for advertising. <coughs> yeah. Whoops. Well, yeah. this one here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm also going to make it a point not to plug the book. If you guys have been in earlier sessions, you've probably heard about the book. What book? There. What? There's yeah, a book? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it looks like there are some 40% uh, some off coupons, so check those out if you're interested. Uh, did a really good job in the same session. Uh, it's a lot of time on it. And I, I, I try to put in some stuff that comes from years of experience of working with skinny. So definitely worth it. Definitely worth looking into. Um, so here's the overview for today. We're going to talk about the fundamentals of a contemporary dot and new skin. All right. We're going to dissect kind of some of how you build that and some tips and tricks from you know from from out there working with it. You know how you can uh, how you can make sure that you're testing. Uh, before you do this, before you put the skin, before you convert the skin, so that so you're actually able to kind of see what's going on for real, so you're not surprised when you put it up in your portal. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do just a, a light overview of a dot .NET widget, um, but I'm gonna do it in the context of uh, search engine optimizing your skins. Um, I know Will's doing a session next, uh, right after this, on, on the uh, on the new client widgets and on the new five, really really good stuff. Um, and then we'll have a little Q and A at the end if we have time. <coughs> so. Features of a modern .NET new skin. Um, this could be the same exact thing if we're talking about a modern website. All right. So basically, what, what I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, is writing standards compliant code. So how to set your your skin to be XHTML. I'm going to point out a, a couple of tips and tricks so that you can actually produce code that generates in your HTML that, that, that's in your skins. Um, and then we're, we're also going to talk a little bit about search engine optimization. So valid skin and clean skin code. Um, you want to, uh, there's some good validators out there, so if you go to W3, 
um, and then also what I'm going to show you is one that's built right into Firefox. You can actually validate your skin um, as you're developing it, so that so you know whether you're writing valid in HTML or not. Okay. Um, and then also, you can do the same thing with the tool that I was telling you about to validate your CSS. So make sure that you're using CSS that's, that's, uh, that's valid, that's not a hack on, on one browser or another. Um, and, and the end goal is really ex better accessibility. So for, uh, you know, for users that are using screen reader, you know, people with disabilities, uh, if, you, if you're writing for government or um, where you have to pass 508 standards, um, then, then you know, this, is, this is what that's for. But the cool thing about doing things the right way and doing things, uh, you know, writing XHTML using clean code is that you've also, that also carries over into the SEO benefit, right? So if you're writing leaner code, if you're doing, if you have your layouts in your CSS, you're not putting everything in your HTML, then you're pairing out everything that search engines look at it that's not your content, right? Because what you want to get in indexed so that you get, you know, when people are searching and, and you've got your websites out there, you want to get traffic from the search engines, you want your content to get indexed. And you, don't, and you don't want to have all the extra clutter of having tables and rows and, and you know having widths and all that right in your you know right in your HTML there. So um, I am going to do a little bit of demo right here. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing I want to show you um, is the that the new site that I've set up, and this is a skin that I did for um, for OpenForce. And so I'm going to show you. I don't have internet access right now, so I don't know if anybody has a you got wireless? Is there wireless? Yep. There is wireless. Okay. You mean that, uh, that Macintosh didn't pick up on that automatically? Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't. Okay, so, yeah, let's come in. Uh, do I need to agree to some agreement? No, I don't think so. Take a word. just open unprotected normal tech school. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Okay, cool. So, uh, well, what, what I'm going to show you real quickly is the tool um, called Validator, or it's HTML Validator, and, and this is one that you can download for Firefox. And what this does is it puts a little thing down in the right corner here to let you know uh, how your how your X, how your HTML or XHTML validates. So um, you can see right here that there are a number of warnings, but I have no. <clears throat> so uh, these are things that are pretty unimportant. There's the, 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 there are things that are built into into the core.nu that are you're always going to get a couple of warnings. Um, but if you do it right, you're not going to get any errors. Okay. Um, so I'll show you real quickly. We take a look. Um, just to give you a brief overview, um, when you're when you're creating a .nu skin, um, it goes into the portals folder. Okay. So when you drop a skin into there, you're going to either go to your portal ID, which the default is going to be portal zero, or you're going to put it in the default, which means it's available to all portals that are installed in there. Um, most, most of the, uh, the first websites you guys are going to do uh, until you really start getting into multi-portal installations are going to be a single portal. So um, you're either going to install it <coughs> in, the, in the default, or you'll install it in the, uh, in the zero. So portal zero, okay? Um, and I don't, I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. So uh, basically, what you do when you want to create a skin is you can create a folder right in the skins folder, and you name that whatever you want your skin package to be. In this case, uh, I got this open forest folder right here. And then if you put the HTML file or the ACX file in there, um, the, then Donna Duke will pick it up and say, okay, this folder has skins. So, um, just to kind of help you see where everything maps here, uh, if we come over, I'm logged in as host right now. If I go to admin, so if we take a look in here, we can see that we have skin packages that map to the same folders that I have on my local, uh, on that, uh, in that portal's default folder. So you can see, here's OF layout options, and we've got OF layout options. Here's open force, minimal entropy. You, you, you see how that maps, everybody understand that? So each one of those is gonna map to a folder in that skin's folder. 